Welcome to YWCA Tulsa's You Can't Outrun. My name is Danny Smith. I am the fitness manager at YWCA Tulsa. I am also a certified personal trainer and fitness nutrition specialist. Today we're going to talk about fitness and nutrition. And joining me in this conversation is Jane Mudgett. Jane, thank you so much for joining me. Hi, I'm really happy to be here, Danny. Danny is my personal trainer and has been for years here at the YW. I'm a leadership coach and an author and a presenter, and I included in my book, Five Alive, the things that we're going to talk about today, food and nutrition and fitness. So it's really close to both of our hearts. So we're going to share screen and share some of our tips of the day. Yeah, so with fitness and nutrition, we hear a lot about it, but we also hear a lot of bad advice. So one of the things I used to believe was that I could eat anything I wanted as long as I exercised. Yeah, and I'm the exact opposite of Danny. I thought if I kept my weight off, because I used to be obese. And so that was really important to me to keep my weight off. And then I really wouldn't have to exercise. And in the discussion is, is, you need both. We were both wrong. <laughs> you need the fitness, you need the exercise for yeah. the full healthy body. Yeah. So today, I just want you to start where you are now. This shouldn't be a um, stress inducing conversation. It shouldn't make you feel guilty. We're just going to assume that all of us are perfect where we're at with a little room for improvement. So let's get going. Well, I like to make excuses and that's another word for barriers. What are the barriers we have? And my common one is I don't have time, Danny. I, I just don't have time. Um, my weight is a challenge. Um, you've heard a lot of other barriers. What do you hear from I clients? I hear I'm a smoker. I don't have a gym membership. I'll start on Monday. That's that's a big one. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. <laughs> so the reality is that these are all perceived barriers. There are some real barriers, and that would be if you require doctor's approval or medical clearance. More often than not, though, it's what? What I say. It's between our ears, you know? It's the excuses that we make within our own head, our own mind, and then we, we don't get it done. And I will just tell you one quick testimonial. In spite of the fact that I'm far from perfect, I can honestly say that after I work out and after I eat well, I've never regretted it. I've always felt better about having a good plate of clean foods, and I've always felt better after I've worked out. But I also think that, that sometimes we just need to move it up our to-do list. You know, If it's important enough, I always find I get it done. So if eating better and feeling better is important, then we just need to move that up the to-do list. So the motto for today is SSI, start now, start small and increase over time. I, I love it. And I feel so strongly about this. Uh, when Danny brought this up, I mean, I ate it up. SSI, start now, start small, increase over time. So let's start with food, shall we? Food. Yes, I love food. What does your plate look like? Well, my plate is far from looking like this right now, uh, except at the end of the meal, maybe. But this is a good place to start because you start paying attention to what does your plate look like. Yeah, so it would be a really good exercise right now if you're listening and you don't have a plate in front of you of food to think about what does your plate usually look like. Um, one of the things I really like to remind myself and tell my clients is that food is fuel. So start now, start small, increase over time, but your plate should be a celebration and it should be something that's fueling your body with micronutrients, vitamins, and amino acids. Yeah, and that idea about fuel really hit home when Danny started sharing that with me. And so although I've made swaps and improvements over time, which we'll talk a little bit about later, the other thing that I realized is I'm trying to get more nutrition per bite. So that's another thing that keeps helping me down the line and celebrating when I look at my food, am I getting maximum nutrition? And sometimes I'm not because it's not enough nutrition. And sometimes it may not be balanced, but I do, I do definitely celebrate eating because I love to eat. I think we have several holidays around that concept. Yeah, exactly, exactly. All right, so food swaps. Jane, what are some of your favorite food swaps? 
Well, the first thing is I'm going to go to sort of the end and package foods. And that is one of the greatest tips I got from a nutritionist was move away from the inner aisles of the grocery store. And that's where packaged and processed foods are with lots of ingredients that aren't healthy. Okay, there's an example. Now, if I stay towards the outside aisles, I would be more involved with getting produce, whether it's sweet potatoes, whether it be spaghetti squash, and also other fruits. And that was where I was trying to get to. So the less packaged foods and the more natural foods. What swaps have you made? Well, we'll go with one of my old school wines. I was a big soda drinker. And by big soda drinker, I mean 32 ounces of- Big gulp. <laughs> gulp soda, sugar, empty calories. Um, and one of the things I did, because I was, I mean, that was really a part of my routine in my day that was very hard for me to break, is I transitioned to sweet tea. Well, not full sweet tea. It was tea with some sweetener in it. And then I transitioned to water. So now I'm pretty much water and sparkling water. Special water. Special water and maybe a cup of coffee in the morning. But yes. I, because of this, and, and I do the same thing, uh, I now keep a bottle of water wherever I am. So if I'm working out in the gym, I have a bottle of water. That's natural. But I also keep it in my car and I keep it right next to where I work. So um, one time uh, I had an office where I actually had a pitcher of water. My goal was to drink water, a whole pitcher every day. I'll say another thing on food swaps that's really important is both of us really look at white foods and we push those out of our lives. So white bread, white flour, um, white foods just don't have nutrition. So the more you can move to whole grains in your bread and, and also in some complex carbohydrates, the better. So the last food swap I'll share is moving away from white bread and going to wheat bread and moving away from white rice and slowly adding some of the other whole grains into white rice so that I didn't have mutiny with my family, number one, and we would acquire the taste over time. So you've learned that. Yeah, the hard so that way. mutiny is a reference to some of the things I've done in the yeah. past with my family. I was going from zero to, so rather than a gentle swap, like you're talking about, I went from zero to 100. And so I think we've had some, we've had some issues. We went from just box muffins to beet muffins. And I got to tell you, the kids were not on board with that. Right. And, you know, sometimes our, our digestive system can handle big changes yeah. in what we eat. So we have to make changes over time again. Again, that starts small, start now and increase over time. So we like to think of things as uh, good, better, best. Why don't you get started? Okay, so good, better, best in the context of fruit. Um, there's canned fruit ready to go. You have the little uh, peaches with the water instead of the syrup. Yeah. Okay. Or in plastic containers. Yeah, the yeah, little yeah. plastic containers. Yeah. Um, so moving from that to frozen, where it has a little bit more of its nutritional value still in it. And then fresh, which has the fiber and the nutrition. Mm -hmm. And that's where you talked about micronutrients as well, yes. that you just get more nutrients with fresh foods. And it, you, you may not have to, you may not be able to make that change overnight, but the same as vegetables, moving from canned to frozen to fresh, staying on those at that outside part of the grocery store is where you're going to find some of the healthiest food possible. Now, an exception to that is where you get whole grains. So whole grains are inside the aisles of the store. And I already alluded to moving away from white grains if possible. And that includes like grits and white rice and moving to things like quinoa, brown rice, millet. What do you eat as well in that area? Um, I like wild rice. Wild rice, I like yeah. It when it has, and, and you can mix some of these together too, so that you have a variety of textures instead of, you know, just the same. Yeah, that's a good idea. And always cook it in whatever requires the longest. And then it's nice to have that, that medley in there as well. Um, probably the biggest change that both of us have made in our families in the last few years is moving away from meat. That doesn't mean there's no meat, it's just less meat. So what do we need to do to go from good, better, best in the meat area? So on this, we have that you're getting 
what do we have? Like fast food, fried food, and then grilled lean proteins. Lean proteins would be um, chicken without the skin on it, um, turkey. So we've covered a lot of areas. And one area that both you and I have done over the last few years is reduce the amount of meat that we actually eat. So what are the biggest changes that you've made? Is it fried food, fast food? What's good, better, best for you now? So previously my protein would come in a fast food wrapper. <laughs> okay. <laughs> and you know, sometimes it was grilled. Um, a lot of times it was fried. And so then the transition would be going from that fried food to grilled meat, lean protein. Mm -hmm. um, and then you get to where you realize you can throw in protein through some of your grains. And so having some of that lean protein with the balance of the fiber from, you know, the high grain proteins. Yeah. Well, and the high grain protein that we like the most is probably that quinoa, really quinoa because it has the it has the most protein on the whole grain. So shifting away from the fried foods, moving to grilled and, and ensuring that you have some non-meat meals as well. Even though one of our best tricks is no meat Monday. No meat Mondays. And that's been a trend for a while, but there are a couple of other days. So what's your favorite day of the week? We really like Taco Tuesday. So this is a thing I've taken from the Lego movie and thrown into my life. It's amazing where you get inspiration, right? right? right exactly. <laughs> so, whatever works. Whatever works. So Taco Tuesday, you know, you can dress this up. If you are vegetarian, you can do um, black beans or you can throw in some lentils there, uh, fish tacos, ground turkey, ground pork. There's all kinds of ways to do a taco. Mm -hmm. And we like to set up a taco bar when we have tacos or when we have people over so people can make their own tacos, even with kids. They like doing their own thing. They, do. they, they like putting their own ingredients in. So that's a fun way to do Taco Tuesday. Where When I grew up, I was in an area where there was a lot of fish on Fridays. And while we do a lot of fish in fr on Friday in our home, we probably do it on other days too because we eat fish a couple times a week, but fish Fridays is another way. And well, Anna just sounds cool. It does say, so, you know, so now we got no meat Mondays, we got taco, taco Tuesdays, Tuesday, we got fish Friday. Friday. You're and already a, three days into healthier you. I know, know but we have a fourth one. So we do Brenner a lot. Um, we're very busy, go, go, go. And Brenner is breakfast for dinner. I did take this from a show too, this title. Um, apparently I watch a lot of TV, but what we'll do is we'll just scramble some eggs or make some omelets and I'll clean my fridge out this way in truth. So whatever's in the vegetable thing that needs to be cooked up, we'll just throw it in with the burner. Mm -hmm. Or if you have leftover vegetables too that have already been cooked, I seem to collect these things. And the next thing you know, we have brimmer with a scramble or we have a stir fry as well. I like that. Um, you know, you can take a picture of the screen and get an idea of some of, our, some of our other ideas. But the one that a nutritionist told me that really hit home for me is I was not eating fruit. And so the first challenge was I needed to eat one piece of fruit a day. And Danny knows that it's her least favorite option, but it was an apple, an orange, or a banana because that's what I was brought up eating. And then the nutritionist challenged me to say, all right, pick one new, completely new fruit or vegetable a week. Now, remember, I was trying to improve the food on my plate and I actually did that. And I tried everything twice. So I, I tried eating it or preparing it. And if I didn't like it, I do it again. And if I didn't like it after the second time, it wasn't included. Edit. Now, you've challenged your kids to do this, haven't you? Yeah, so we went and I was trying Jane's nutritionist thing, Jane's thing, and I was like, okay, this will be fun. We'll take the kids. So pepino melon is what we walked out with. Um, we haven't sliced it up yet. This is a very new try. We've tried a bunch of interesting stuff, but I'll keep you all posted. And if you've tried it, reach out to us and let me know how you eat that. Yeah. And I have no idea what pepino melon is. So it's really it cute. A, they say it's like bacon. a cucumber and a honeydew mellow, like melon. I said mellow. Yeah. Melon, like 
together. Mixed, that's the flavor. I mean, this it's gives not you hybrid. this gives you an idea. We're trying new things. We don't know. The worst case scenario is yes, you've lost a couple of bucks, but you've tried something new and maybe you have a new favorite, like bok choy. For me, I didn't use a lot of bok choy, and that's a new favorite in my cooking. Well, and it's inclusive with the family too. If you have a family, yeah. they enjoy having ownership of their food and saying that. Yeah, exactly. When they're picking it out. Yes, when they choose it. So what does your plate look like now? So my plate is colorful. It's inclusive with a variety of textures and it just looks so much prettier. It does look prettier. Of course, it's much better with the empty plate, but a lot of times you have, you have white foods, you have gray foods, you have gravy kind of things that are brown. It, you know, adding colors is not only nice for your eyes, but it really provides you with a lot more nutrition. Absolutely. And I think that's exactly right. If you're looking at your plate and it's always kind of the same tannish grayish hue, um, just throwing a pop of green or red in there um, will go a long way. Mm -hmm. Well, Fitness. now, okay, now so, Danny's in her spot. Okay, Danny, so, Danny, yeah. mm -hmm. um, fitness and movement. Um, this is much more. Thank you. Jane's going to start now, start small and increase over time. I can talk about this. <laughs> well, tell me more about starting. Tell, now, me, more, tell me more. Um, what is, okay. So Everybody tries to start with the new year as a whole, like from zero to nothing. They go into the gym and they're ready to change their whole life. And the problem that we run into is that- There's no parking spaces. <laughs> That's as a member. <laughs> as a member, yeah. Okay, um, sorry. So the start now, great. They've got it down. Um, some other tips for starting now would be incorporating one daily new activity. So whether it's going for a walk after dinner, um, I do squats while I brush my teeth or before I brush my teeth, um, calf raises while I dry my hair. But uh, what's one thing that you've incorporated to up your movement? Well, I do, I do the squats every morning and it's because I really admire Danny, but also I got to tell you, I got some creaky bones. So in the morning I do that to help with my knees and my hips. And once I kind of get the juices flowing, I feel better in the day after just sleeping all night. The other thing that I've seen is I've seen a lot of families walking together. So it's moms or dads or partners out with kids, sometimes they're holding hands, sometimes they're on scooters, sometimes they're on bikes, and I really like it. And it seems to be uh, first thing in the morning, at lunchtime, and later in the day, particularly because people are working from home. Yeah. So get the dog, get the neighbor, get the kid, and just start moving. Get on a trail or in the neighborhood somewhere. So the start small, I alluded to the New Year's resolution and how <laughs> it goes from, you know, they're starting now, which is awesome, but they don't start small. It's somebody who has little exercise experience and they go from not working out <laughs> to going six days a week or going as heavy as they can stand. And the problem with that is that they're going to injure themselves. They're going to cause overuse injuries and burnout. The burnout factor is real with that. So small doses consistently. Yeah. And you know, the other things that we've seen, particularly since I'm pretty active in, on the trails in, uh, in Tulsa, is that you know, they might be open during the week and then weekend, we got the weekend warriors out and they're, they're getting on their bikes and they're running or they're doing, they're doing lots of things. And then come Monday, they're worn out or they're sore. And the same thing happens at the beginning of the year at the gym too, or it could be any time really. But if you do the start now, start small and increase over time, then you're not going to be a sore and you're not going to get kicked in the behind by, you know, just getting burnt out. So increasing over time means what to you? To me, it means start with uh, what you can do. Okay. Um, start with a little bit of what you can do. If we're going to go with national standards, that would be 30 minutes a day, five days a week, 150 minutes. Okay. But we'll go into that more later. But start where you are and just slowly either add time or add intensity or add something new. So if you're doing cardio, maybe try adding strength training. Okay. 
And I like the idea of just doing little bits at a time of, you know, when I first went to the spin class, uh, I got in there and they like went wide open throttle right from the get go. And I'm on the bike dying and feeling a lot of peer pressure. And I decided to actually stop. And I left after about 15 minutes and I was feeling pretty de dejected. But the next time I went, I was going to try it again. And I said, I'm going to try to do 20 minutes. And so I worked up to the time where I could do the full 60 minutes, but I couldn't do that at the get-go. So I gave myself permission to do the start small and increase over time so I wouldn't beat myself up. And I ended up getting to a place where I can do the whole class. Well, I was at that place. After the winter time, I got to retrain again when it comes to getting on my bike and spin class because I didn't keep up with it. But Give yourself permission to increase time and increase intensity as things go on. Why movement matters. It helps prevent disease. Um, it adds to your quality of life. But let's go over the big, like, prevents disease. Heart attacks, stroke, high blood pressure, type 2 diabetes, many types of cancers, arthritis, depression, anxiety. When you look at this list, you got to wonder, why aren't we all moving more? Yeah. Um, and I have to say that part of what we're dealing with is our own genetics that were passed on to us. And some of mine includes heart attack and, and includes high blood pressure and includes cancer. And so uh, even though I am a cancer survivor of more than 15 years, that was a real wake up call between that and genetics. The reality is most of what we can control is not from our genetics. It's us getting out there, moving more and having that plate that has a lot of color. So movement really does matter. And it will reduce the amount of times we go to the doctor and the amount of medication that we have to take. So let's go ahead and get started on the fitness, good, better, best. We did this with food. So what have we got in mind about movement? Okay, good. So national standards are 150 minutes a week. Um, a lot of people will break that out with 30 minutes, five days a week. I really like moving even more than that. So some movement every day. Of course you do. I do. Um, but we have walking for this. So okay. Walking 30 minutes every day. Okay, better. 30 minutes of aerobics every day. So the difference here is that it's just a little bit more aerobic volume. It's a little bit more cardio. Um, it could be a workout class. It could be walk jogging, okay? And then strength training, adding into that better, better category, two days a week of strength training. So best, um, more than 30 minutes of aerobic activity every day strength training up to three times a week and stretching three times a week. Now these, exactly, stretching can be yoga. It can be um, PNF stretching. It can just What's be- What's PNF stretching? Proprioceptive Of course, we all say that, but the idea <laughs> is more than just the stretch you do when you get out of bed. Yes, so okay. it's really taking time to focus on the muscle groups and elongating them. So these are some things that you could incorporate. This isn't a catch all, but I think it's a really good demonstration of how you could go from good to better to best. And it's a great example here of you can use this chart and then think about adding time and adding intensity to move along that same continuum. Tips and tricks. <laughs> I love this one because for me, if I put it on the schedule, I will do it. And I'm not married to my schedule per se, but if I have, I'm going to go on a bike ride, I'm going to go to the gym, I'm going to work out with Danny as a personal trainer, I have a higher likelihood of getting it done. And now that I'm going back to the gym again, I actually pack my bag in advance and I have it in the car. You already know I have a water bottle in my car and that just gets me going. What are your yeah. tricks? So I will struggle with motivation to get my workouts done sometimes. Uh -oh. And so I spend a little bit of time with um, priming my brain when I'm really in those, those spots where I don't want to 
go out and do what I need to do. Mm -hmm. And so I will look at journal articles. Um, I'll look up races because I do enjoy running and racing. Yeah. Um, just a few little things to kind of get my brain like, yes, let's go do this. And one of the things that you help me with, and I do this on my own, but but that's trying new things also. I like high intensity interval training, but I equally like going out and hiking, but I don't like doing any of those things every single day. So when I'm working out, either the workout is mixed up or each day I have things mixed up. And again, bring your kids, get a friend, get a support group and get moving. That's another way just to make it, you know, incorporate it into your schedule. Document your journey. This is my thing. That's James. Because this is research-based and actually almost everything we've mentioned is research-based. But if part of your journey is to be more healthy, eat better, move more, the science tells us if we document it, we have a higher likelihood of succeeding. It's just like writing down our goals. And you can use apps like My Plate and My Fitness Pal, or there are other apps out there. You can actually write it down in a journal. Or what I like is I just take photos. So I take photos of like my shoes when I'm going out or where I am as far as hiking or swimming, that kind of thing, or biking. And then I just kind of keep track is my plate looking better over time? Am I increasing that nutrition per bite? Am I moving my body? And the idea is I want to be able to go back and, and look at over a period of a couple of months, are those pictures improving or what's happening in the journal? Yeah, exactly. Right. Exactly. Some other tips are, um, it's okay. <laughs> Some other tips would be um, Strava. If you oh, are, yeah. if you like to log your distance for running yep. or biking, or biking. Or, um, mm -hmm. and finding a few favorite routes, and it will even kind of show you your improvements if you're improving on certain climbs. So I mm -hmm. think that's a really fun one to incorporate. Yeah, we use that in our downhill skiing also to keep track of how many runs we do, and it shows calories and altitude and that kind of thing as well. And I think the bottom line is, this is my mantra, is that it's really never too late to get started. That it's not too late. It doesn't make any difference of where you are. We're going to accept where you are right now. And we're giving you permission to accept yourself the way you are. And it is not too late. It's not too late. It's never too late to it's make- It's never these... too late. It's <laughs> never too late to make the improvements. So get on it. Food plus movement equals health. Your health journey. Start now. Start, Start small. small increase, increase over time. time. We've really seen this work personally. You've seen it work with clients. Yes. And so I think it's time to celebrate. celebrate. Good time. Come on. Eat I'm better. Sorry. Move more. Thank you for joining us today. Well, we have to move back so we don't have the lights. Okay. Finish. Hey, how are you doing? Hi. Okay, welcome to YWCA. We're going to... Pump you up. Wait, oh, no, it's I forgot like, to it's do like that. Pump. No, I have wait. to start like this. Yeah, and then it's okay. pump. Okay. Wait. What? Pump you up. That's I'm going to it. pump, clap you up. Yes. yes. Okay, right. so we're Hans and Franz, and we're going to pump, pump you, you up. up. We got to get our timing right. Oh. Okay. We okay. never have our yeah. timing right. Well, let's try this Okay, we're starting again. Welcome to YWCA. Tulsa, we're going to pump you, you up. I'm off. <laughs> How do you know you're off? I'm off. Oh, you're off. Yeah, no, I'm off. Okay, okay, okay this is the last one. We're okay. going to get serious. Okay, okay. serious, okay, serious, right. serious. Right, Let's just get, oh man, my neck really cracked. I like that. Okay, I'm ready. I'm going to pretend that I have I'm a very small waist. I'm going to let you do the waist. talking and I'll do the, the waist.
Okay. I think it goes better. Okay, welcome to YWCA. We're going to talk about food and fitness, and we are going to Paul. You, you are. are. That was great. Ah, we did it. <laughs> okay, now, uh, now uh, we have to do our ending thing uh, too. Okay. So remember, okay. we're not allowed to use um, uh, music that's licensed. So we're going to just do this ourselves. So at the beginning, uh, well, in the food section and the end section. We think it's important to do this little thing. So we're, when it comes to food, you need to celebrate food. You need to have colors on your plate. Celebrate good times. Come on. We're gonna celebrate now. Oh yeah, I forgot the tune. So I think that's great. I mean, I really think that that's worth being in the video. Uh, but you know, do we want to do that again or are we good? We got, we got pump you up. Well, Hans and Franz pump you Absolutely. up. Absolutely. We've got celebrate. Oh, Let's do Okay, okay. You and we're not start. allowed to use the song, right? Well, not the recording. Okay, you start. I'll come in. We celebrate. You, you do like the ending part. So food and fitness, and we're going to celebrate. So you start, and then I'll come in, and I'll celebrate with you. So. Like you said, I'm not falling fully, in case you're wondering. I know, bless my little heart. So okay, you're so. going to say the ending of why we're celebrating food and fitness, and thank you for being with us today. Okay, so that. this is you're like the, do the very closing, closing You're going to do that closing message. Okay. And then you're going to start singing I'm and dancing, start, and I'm like, going to come in. serious and then take it. Okay, okay. all right, do that. Okay, so this is for the ending. Take 427. Okay, so I hope that you've learned some tips and tricks from us today. Um, food, nutrition, your plate, it really matters. And most importantly, you've got to celebrate. Celebrate good times. Come on. Celebrate food and nutrition. Celebrate nutrition. Yeah. I think that's perfect. I think we're big movie stars. Yeah. Oh, yeah. Oh, oh. At least in our own mind, Danny. At least in our own mind. I'm going to be a vlogger. Yeah. <laughs> Bye. Bye. Yay, we did it. Are we good? We're good.